Hi guys, good day, good day, good day, Empress G here again. Anyway guys, I have a friend of mine, she want to get some, and I, I haven't seen this for a while, it's some um, corn pork, you know. I remember when I was growing up back home, you know, we had a outdoor kitchen with a fireside and, you know, my aunt and my grandmother used to make corn pork and you'd put it over what you call the crank crank, and anytime they need a piece like to do the aki, corn pork and aki they'll go cut a piece and that thing would just cure over there right over here i seen corn pork in the the store but guys all they did is just put it in salt and um that's it it has no flavor but this how i go up first um with um corn pork guys first of all the pork is washed on properly with your lime and vinegar and all of that and one of the secret in the corn pork that because it's going to leave out. You can put it in the fridge if you want. But um, always leave it out. And it does not go bad or anything. It stays perfectly, you know, good. But one thing, the first thing up front, you have it has to be well dried. After it wash, well dried. And this is like a, I think a pork shoulder we use. And you cut it up in pieces. See? And this is why I still have the towel keep drying it. Because um, once the salt go on it, the salt going to cure it. And as for... Um, I know people talk about using pink salt or sodium nitrate. I think um, in a lot of processed food, food like um, hot dogs and bacon and stuff like that, sodium nitrate is used. But I think they use a small amount because that stuff, if you read up about it, it can be very dangerous, can ca cause cancer and stuff like that, you know. So I think they they do, when they use it in bacon and stuff like that, they use it within the guideline, a certain amount they use. But so... And what it does, what sodium nitrate does, they said it um, protects the meat from bacteria and stuff like that. But the salt does that and it gives it a color because you, when you buy pig steel, and I saw, I was watching a lot of video back home and folks doing um, stew peas, and guys, the pig steel is so red. That's the sodium nitrate that gives it that color also. So it gives it color and they said it um, protects the meat from going from spoiling um you know which i grew up with corn pork and you know what it's just the salt that cure it and the salt the salt pulls out all the moisture so that's why it's a it's able for you to keep it outside for as long as you want or you can keep it in the fridge and, um either way but we um i've done it a few times for people and this is for a friend of mine i'm doing it right now because i'm um, you know and a lot of time when you cook when i cook um um pig steel and stuff like that i really cook it for other people because i'm um, you know, sort of cut way down, um, not a big, you know, up there. I, you know, I used to love pork, but you know what? I don't do too much of it right now. So this is for a friend of mine. I'm um, doing right now corn pork. And folks, um, like I said, one of the basic of it, it has to be, the pork has to be well dried. Um, so we got it. It's cut up. We wash it just like you do in any other meat. I guess some people don't wash it because they say it's cure. And, but we wash it with lime vinegar and all of that. And well pat it dry and so this is a pork shoulder you were using that this is the bone in it and it's better you get meat with um the skin and some fat on it that you get better flavor you know okay so we're gonna be using I'm using kosher salt but I grind it up um, I find when you grind it up finder um, yeah you know it, it works coarse too but you know I like to grind up so this is kosher salt um, we have some fresh um, Thyme. This is a green, fresh green thyme. I have some crushed garlic, some onions, some green um, scallion or green onion. I have some crushed bay leaf. I crush up the pimenta a bit because, you, you know, you get a better effect when you do them like that. And I also have a, just slightly crush up some um, cloves also. And I have some rosemary and... I have this is the root part of the cilantro and folks um you know like i said people can do um everybody do this stuff how they want to do it but guys when you do i uh, want we do it like this with the um how i grew up with this when you're ready to use this this is about um they said in three days um the salt take it again use it but this um i re recommend that you leave it about two three weeks and then it get you know the longer you, you leave it to cure is the better and when all of this um, seasoning take if affecting it, guys, when you cook that meat, you know, it's awesome. You know, so 
first of all, we're going to put in um, the garlic. I crush up some garlic and a little piece of ginger. And like I said, folks, this meat doesn't go bad. If you, if you do it wet, then you're in problem. But make sure it's totally dry, you know, and so you can, at that scent, you can leave it outside. I'm wearing my gloves and, oh, I also have the scotch bonnet here, folks. Um, I forgot to tell you, that's one. Of, and folks, if you want to give it a little coloring, I have a little vegetable coloring. You can just put over it um, and that's it. But you know what? It's no big deal because most people, um, for coloring. And that's what you get from that sodium nitrate stuff. So, you know, this is it. So, if in case you want to have it a little color, you just put on um, some food, um, food coloring on it, a little red food color. That's the onion there. And that's the green, this is a green onion. I'm using mostly the green part because you get a lot of flavor in that scent. And this is fresh rosemary with a stick and all. And the thyme, folks, I recommend you use green thyme. Um, oh, awesome. And this is the root of the cilantro. I like the bottom part. This is where all the flavor is. The leaves are good, yes, but in the, the root part down there, that's where you get a lot of flavor. And the pimenta, and this is one of the secret ingredients here, one of the main secret ingredients. And along with your clove. And I'm going to get, right now, uh, let me go get the scotch bonnet because, you know, when you said, um, talking about, um, you have to have your pepper there, folks. Let me just get, grab some scotch bonnet. So this is salt pork, as we call it. And it's going to be left curing for a couple weeks. Like I said, after three days, the salt is set in it. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to add it. But, um, the longer you leave it, folks, uh, you give it that two, three weeks. Oh, awesome. And at that point, if you want to just bag it and put it in your freezer, or you want to leave it in the container, we're going to be using a little bucket. But what you do, folks, do not use um the pan like I'm using there. Use a plastic container or glass, okay? Because um, the salt and stuff will react with um, the um, stainless steel um, thing. So use a, I'm using a plastic container. Or you can, if you have a glass one, you use the glass, okay? So I'm just cutting up the um, pepper right now. This is why we call it corn pork, guys. So I'm doing about, cutting up about three scotch bonnet pepper. And here it is, folks. That's why I'm wearing the glass, because I'm not going to get to this stage. So I have about three scotch bonnet pepper there folks that's why we call it corn pork i'm gonna cut another one uh, she she loves to eat she loves a lot of eats in her stuff so well you know it's corn pork so you have to have um uh, so and you know back in the day folks this was popular because like right now even right now in jamaica a lot of people don't have light everything in their freezer so maybe a lot of people's gonna be going back to this way folks so you know and, uh, yeah after a month a lot of people back home still don't have any light all the you know people grow the chicken and they lose some chicken and stuff you know so this was one of the ways um back in the day you know when people didn't have refrigerator um a lot of you know meat was cured like this and like I said, we had, you know, an outdoor kitchen. Even though you have a kitchen indoor, we have an outdoor kitchen where you roast your breadfruit and all of that. And you'll have the thing right over the fire. Um, a thing hanging, hanging over the fire. And when it's seasoned up, we wouldn't cut it up like this. We'd um, just put one big thing and you put it over, the, over there and leave it there. And when you're ready, you just keep cutting off a piece. And guys, ugh. So folks, I'm putting in all of this right now, mixing up everything together. And I'm telling you folks, when you come back in a week or two with this, this is corn pork. This is corn pork. So I'm going to start adding on the, the salt right now. 
And you can put as much salt as possible, folks. The more, the merrier. You know? This, this is what's going to keep fit. And like I said, make sure that your pork or any meat you're doing is dry, especially when you're carning pork. It's dry, so God, the salt is going to do, be doing all the work. The salt is going to be pulling out all the moisture. And also at the same time, you know, cure it. So you don't have to worry about any meat here um, going bad, you know, or anything like that. This has been done, been used for, oh, uh, for such a long time, way, way back, you know. Because at one point, um, people didn't have any refrigerator, the ice box, box come along, then eventually, even when um, fridge came along, not everybody could afford it, so a lot of people were still, and also to folks, the meat tastes so much nicer, you know, you have it corn like, the, like this way, because fresh pork, yeah, you can see the fresh pork I'm cooking, and Jerk, I think jerk is the closest with pork, um, you know, but fresh, but having your meat like this, and this is what you call corn pork. So I'm giving it a good rub, folks, and just make sure everything is mixing together. I'm going to add a little bit more. Now I'm going to add some the kosher salt, but I'm going to add the, the coarse one, a little coarse one on, yeah. So I grind up most of it because it, so it goes right through and I'm using a bit of coarse one right now, okay? And as I say folks, if you want to get some color in it, you just rub some food coloring on it. You know, that's it. And I think you'd more do that to like pick stale, you know, because this is corn pork, you know, I have to put any coloring or anything on it. So I am going to go get my bucket and um. And as I say, it's going to stay outside, folks. Um, it's not going to get bad because it's, salt is what preserves it. So, it cannot go bad. So, this is my bucket here. Early on, I did a video on making my own cut. I start making my own salt fish. And so, I have that video to upload soon. And I was done, and guys, um, you know, I just come to start doing my own stuff because I was watching a video. Some of the saltfish in the store, I swear they look, uh, they, well, you know, I just buy codfish, not the saltfish. Um, the codfish, uh, codfish is at the more expensive um, because saltfish is any fish they salted. But codfish, you now it's, yeah. So I figure a friend of mine came up and she brought some snook and i did a video i did a video a uh, couple weeks ago on salt fish and they were, they were ready and i used them and they were so good so the rest of the fish i just um salted so i'm making my own salt fish right now folks so there you go and it comes out very nice you could use i i did use in those fish i did use um snook and um some uh yellowtail snap and guys oh my gosh you could not tell that that wasn't salt fish um, from the store. So right now, that's another thing to my resume, making my own salt fish, and it's awesome. So I'd make, I did a video today of that. Um, again, um, because I did some on this finish off. I did that video, my friend brought up I, some snook. And that's one of the best fish to do your, um, your fish. If you don't have, want to use well, all cod, um, I don't think you can find it. You would have to buy just pieces of cod and salt them. But you can tell the difference with, when you salt the cod. The snook, it just tastes like codfish. So, folks, this is the bucket here. See? And right now, I'm just going to pour more salt over it. And as I say, you can never add too much salt. I'm just gonna pour the rest of the and I'm using um kosher salt guys. I crush some and I'm use some holes. Okay, like kosher salt is just give it a bet a, I get a better better result. Um <coughs> pepper folks. Wow! 
This is why they call it corn pork. I'm just getting a little bit more salt to add to it. And like I said, for some, there's no, when I do mine, there's no limit of how much salt. You, you put the salt that you want. Uh, you know, it's better you have enough in there than you have less. Okay, because the salt is the curing agent. Okay. So that's it right there, folks. And what I'm going to do, like I said, do not do it in a, um, plastic or glass, okay? That will react with, um, why can't I remember the name? It will, okay. This is not a good thing to cure it in. It will react with this. So use a plastic um, thing or a glass. So folks, this is it right there. You see that? That's the corn pork right here, guys. And I leave all the ingredients I use in the description if anybody want to try. And that's why I wear the gloves. <laughs> and guys, I'm just going to close this down. And you just put it down any place because, um, as I say, it will not go bad. Because the main ingredient there that does the salt and that's cure it. You don't need no sodium nitrate or none of that in your corn pork. So this is Jamaican corn pork. This is how I grew up. See my grandmother and my aunt do it. And my, I think my, my mom didn't do much cooking. Um, I didn't see much cooking around my mom because she leave when we were young. So folks, this is, I'm just going to put a label on it. And this is corn pork. And in three weeks, guys, this is going to, like I said, in three days, um, the salt is fully taken in it. But the longer you keep it, um, is the better it is. So I'm going to, I'll open it by the end of the week again and just um, see it going. And that's it. But I'm going to, uh, she's going to keep it for three weeks. So this is my friend coming to pick this up, I think, on the weekend. So I'll open it again before she comes so this is jamaican corn salt pork or corn pork okay for, not not salt corn pork because this uses a lot of different um stuff in it so again folks this is it there i should have turned that light on yeah so this is it there folks can you see all salted and all that good stuff in there all those rosemary the thyme and the all spices is the main ingredient and the clove okay and you have to have your scotch bonnet pepper in there folks so this is it and your salt is a must and like i said folks you make sure when you you do it after you wash your pork you make sure it's well dry you dry it uh, because um you don't want any any moisture in it okay so that's it there folks so please like share and subscribe to the channel everybody Big up yourself, everybody. Um, Ivelyn, I see you there. Big up yourself, Ivelyn. Um, Noreen, Ma Melon, Mary, Deacon, Fire, Jeremy. Everybody, big up yourself. Um, Debbie, everybody, big up yourself. So, guys, um, that's corn pork. Their recipe for it. I'll leave the recipe in the description. Anybody want to try it? So, have yourself a wonderful evening, guys. Take it easy. All right, peace.